Good morning, Pelham Road. Hope you rested well last evening. And I'll just get to it today, all right? Looks like it might rain, so better move on quickly. A uh, metaphor is a figure of speech uh, in which a word or a phrase literally denoting one kind of object or idea is used in place of another to suggest a likeness between these two. Uh, Virginia Woolf would put it this way, books are the mirror of the soul. Uh, Mother Teresa was prone to say, I'm a little pencil in the hand of a writing God who is sending a love letter to the world. Mother Teresa was a small, small woman, but she was no pencil. However, she was God's love letter. And here again, this may be best understood by distinguishing between facts and truth. A metaphor is not a fact. The wordsmith H.L. Mencken wrote, happiness is the china shop, love is the bull. The facts here are all wrong. Uh, look away from the facts. China shops are not named happiness. But the truth is profound, truer than true, actually. Happiness is fragile like China. So metaphors are true, they're just not factual. In the Old Testament, the writers push their language to the boundaries to describe the God we cannot see. Once God is described as a potter, another time as a shepherd, but God's not a potter and God's not a shepherd, but God is like both. The psalmist writes that God is the one who rides on the clouds. And maybe this is what Michelangelo was thinking of when he painted the Sistine Chapel. And God is also described in the Old Testament as sitting on the throne, uh, as a king. A powerful image that endures to this day in much of our music and church describes God in this way. In the New Testament, there is a hidden nugget people overlook oftentimes. Jerusalem, O oh Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. Here you have God as a female chicken. Obviously, God is not a chicken or a king or a potter, but these are honest attempts to describe God. Now, when Jesus arrives, he makes every effort to improve the people's understanding of God. The descriptions they used um, were not wrong. They were just kind of dead and outdated. And so when the disciples ask him to teach them a prayer, the way he begins his prayer is, Our Father. In my elementary work of reviewing Scripture, this strikes me as really groundbreaking. For centuries, we thought the earth was the center of the universe. But when, we, but when we learned it was the sun, oh, this was revolutionary. Now, no one looks at those who believe the earth was the center and says, oh, how foolish they were. Only those post-Copernicus people who still believe the earth is the center of the world or the universe are ridiculed. When the old way is revealed as dead, just let it die and embrace the better way. And the followers who thought of God as Lord and judge or king were now hearing that God was actually like a father. And this was a Copernicus-like discovery. It was groundbreaking. Kings give command, judges pronounce judgments. Fathers, what do fathers do? They teach, they love, they nurture. Now, I recognize that the word father is not heard in 2020 as it was spoken in the time of Christ. And while I don't think it is beneficial to shrink metaphors, I've never been afraid to expand them within reason. I think it is reasonable to believe Jesus is not thinking male he is thinking parent. A parent has authority, granted, somewhat limited as the children age, but a, a parent primarily cares, nurtures, trains, prepares, and guides. So if it helps you to consider this metaphor, 
as mother or grandfather or parent, then don't hesitate. In Luke's version of the Lord's Prayer, Jesus concludes with this rather descriptive commentary. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? Hmm. If you then, who are, let us say, evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Jesus is teaching his disciples to reconsider what they have previously heard. God doesn't bring storms or pestilence. God provides what is necessary and valued, just like a father. Have a great day.